Oh, I just heard that you are really hungry. So why not make a burger? In 3D of course. So let's start gathering some references. And also if you want to download the project files, you will get it on my Gumroad page, link is in the description. So just search for burger on Google and find as clear reference as you can. And I am using a software called PureRef to collect references, which is free and I recommend you to install it as well. So I think this bunch of reference is what I want. Now in Blender let's add in a reference image of a burger and any image from side view will work here. And let's change the Y and Z rotation to 0 and X rotation to 90. Now to see through the image go to image properties and check opacity and decrease it. Now let's add a cylinder object to make the top burn and you can turn on X-ray to see through the cylinder as well. Now go to edit mode and select all top vertices and match it to the burn. Not every vertex will match perfectly since this photograph is in perspective. Now we can add edge loops to form the shape. Now to smooth the edges you can press Ctrl B to bevel and you can see the rough shape is almost done. I will bevel the bottom edge as well just a little bit. Now go to object mode and in solid view right click and shade smooth. Now to add an organic surface let's go to modifier and add a displace modifier and click new. Now click this button to add a texture and set the texture to clouds. Now you can see the surface is looking very jagged because we don't have enough geometry. So let's add a subdivision surface modifier and set the levels to 2 and move the subdivision modifier above the displace modifier. Now play with the size value of the texture. Now at the bottom you can see some stretching so an easy way to fix it is selecting the face and press I to insert it. There is still some stretching but that won't be noticeable. Now if you think that the displacement is too much, you can decrease it from the modifiers. After you are confirmed with everything, let's move the burn to a collection. So a collection is a sub container which is uh, really helpful for organizing the scene. Or sometimes you get frustrated by the amounts of object in the scene. So with the burn selected press M and select new collection and I will call it as top burn and hit enter. Now press shift D to duplicate the burn and right click to cancel its position change. Now press H to hide it. Now this duplicated burn is just for backup and I always keep backup with me. Now uncheck this camera icon which means that it will not render. Now let's apply both of the modifiers by going to this drop down and apply. So we have this much of details, so let's go to sculpt mode. And with this clay strip brush, let's try sculpting it. So you can see that there is not enough geometry to sculpt it. So let's add a multi resolution modifier. This modifier allows you to change different subdivisions level in different modes and it is much performant as compared to subdivision surface modifier. So go to sculpt mode and hit subdivide twice. Now you can see that the details are much more sharper than before. But you can see from a closer sculpt it again fade away. So let's subdivide it a third time. But I thought that it was too much so later I set it back to 2 again. So right now I am not concerned with the poly count since this is just a single object. And to make it much more realistic, I think that geometry should be enough. Okay, great. Now I think everything is good to go. So let's start sculpting with the clay strip brush. So just hover it randomly to create an uneven surface on the bun. And we will smooth it later. And I am using a paint tablet while sculpting. It's not necessary, but I highly recommend to have one.
Now let's select this smooth brush and set this trend to a lower value like 0.4 and let's smooth the details a little bit from everywhere. Also there is a shortcut for smooth brush so if you hold down shift with any brush and sculpt it, it will get smooth. But the setting of the original smooth brush will affect. Now at the bottom of the bun, I have got this stretching so smooth brush fix that issue. So if you go back to object mode, you will see that our whole sculpt is gone. Well, don't worry, just increase the level viewport subdivisions to 2 as well. And there you have it. So let's duplicate this bun again and create a backup for it. Now in the similar manner, you have to create the bottom bun as we made the top one. You can also duplicate the top one and place it at the bottom. But I think that there is very much difference in the top and the bottom one. So I prefer to make the bottom one separately. Also the bottom one will be a bit flat. So if you face any difficulty, tell me in the comments. Now it's time to make the lettuce leaf. So on Pinterest, I found the image of lettuce. So I downloaded that. And don't worry, link of all the PNGs will be in the description. And if the image format is something rare such as JFIF, you can just Google JFIF to PNG and any converter will work here. So then in Blender, go to Add, Image, Images as Planes. And if the option for Images as Planes is not available, you can just enable it from Add-ons. So let's add it. And in viewport shading, change it from material to texture. And let's hide the top bun for now. Now press 7 to go to top view. And now in edit mode, press K to select the knife tool. And let's roughly trace its border to cut it. And this is the best way I have found to use images for burger. And to close the cut, just click on the first point. Then select the latest face and press Ctrl I to invert the selection and delete faces. Uh, with that face selected, press E to extrude to a desirable thickness. Now you can see the leaf has no geometry to deform it into a shape. So to add geometry while maintaining the shape, we need to add a modifier called remesh modifier. And let's set that to sharp. Now you can increase the iteration to get a better shape. And also if you want to see the poly count of the specific object, you can add a decimate modifier below it just to view it. And when you are done with that, apply the remesh modifier. But now you can see that the texture is gone. So to fix that, go to UV editing tab and press 7 for top view and press A to select all polygons and then go to UV, project from view. Now go to shading view and just increase the UV size and that's it. Let's move the letters to a different collection as well. Now to lay the letters leaf on top of burn, let's add a subdivision surface modifier and set the levels to 2 and add a cloth modifier. And make sure that you are on first frame. Now add a collision modifier to the bottom bun and increase the friction all the way up under the soft body and cloth section. Now move it closer to the bun and then in physics, go to cache and select the end frame for simulation and then hit bake and wait for a minute until it simulates. You can also press the escape key to stop the simulation. Now let's play the simulation and as you can see it is and as you can see it is laying on top of the bun. Move to your desired frame and then apply both subsurf modifier and the cloth modifier. Uh, if you want to add more thickness you can add a solidify modifier and then with the use of proportional editing you can deform the lettuce. Now you can repeat the same process for two more lettuce leaf. Now let's go to shading tab and this is an optional step. It also depends upon your system. But since this is just a single object, I will add displacement to the lettuce leaf. 
So let's duplicate the image texture and don't forget to turn on the node wrangler add-on from preferences and it will be a really huge time saver. So hold down control and shift button and click on the image texture to view it. Now let's change the color space to non color. But now as you can see this also change the color space for the first image texture as well. So to fix that click on this number button whatever it is and it will become a single user copy. So if you make changes to this image texture it will be only applied to this one only. Now change the render engine from EV to cycles and set that to GPU if you have one. Now let's add a color ramp node to make it black and white because displacement only works with black and white colors. Those area filled with white colors will be elevated and those with black color will be lowered. Now add a displacement node and plug it into the displacement and plug the principal BSDF into the surface and plug the color ramp into the height. Then go to material setting and change the displacement type from bump only to displacement only. Now you can see some displacement but it's very jagged. So let's decrease the strength and to make the displacement more defined let's again add a subsurf modifier. Now in cycles rendered view you can see that the latest leaf is looking more realistic. And since the latest leaf will be covered by other wedges, a subsurf level of 1 is more than enough. And there you go, your lettuce is done. Now you can repeat the same process for tomatoes and onions but instead of using the cloth simulation you can just deform them using proportion editing and instead of using displacement I am going to use bump map. So just use the non-colored version and plug it into the height of the bump node and plug the normal into the normal and then play with the strength value. You can also use the non-colored version for the roughness as well. Uh, which I forget to do with the lettuce and then add in a math node and set it to multiply and play with the numbers and also don't go too high or too low and uh, there you go your tomatoes and onions so now for the patty I went to Pinterest to search for references of wedge and non wedge patties and brought them into pure ref and I think I'm going to make the non wedge one because it looks mouth watering. So let's add in a cylinder and try to match the size with your reference and then add in a subsurf modifier and then you will see this weird shape. So with that let's go to edit mode and insert the upper face by pressing I and then delete that face. And then select the whole edge loop by holding down alt and left clicking on the edges and then press F3 to search and if it's not F3 it could be spacebar for you and search for grid fill and hit enter. Now do the same for the bottom one as well. Then in object mode shade it smooth and set the levels to 2. Then add a displace modifier and a noise texture as we did for the buns and lower its strength. Now in shading tab let's create a new material for it. Now in here let's duplicate the principal BSDF and then hold down control shift and right mouse button drag to mix the two shaders. Now set one of its color to dark brown and one dark orange. Now to mix that add in a noise texture and plug it into the factor. Now you can see the stretching in the noise texture. So to fix that let's select the noise texture and press ctrl T to add in texture coordinates. Then plug the object into the vector. Then you can add a color ramp node to make the transition a little bit harder. Now you can duplicate the same noise texture and plug it into the bump and plug it into the normal. And same for the second one as well. If you want the details to be more crispier and sharp you can play with the details and roughness value. Uh, same for the second one and feel free to experiment with this material. Also keep the noise scale same for all noise textures. Then you can use same noise texture for the roughness and to control it add a math node and you can set it to either add or multiply. 
so the part that is partially cooked that is the light orange part i will keep it a bit shiny and the part that is completely cooked that is the brown one i will keep it less shinier then with the use of proportional editing lay it on top of the tomatoes for the cheese i went to google for some references and then brought them into pure ref and this time instead of only using the cloth simulation we will also use liquid simulation because laying on top like cloth and melting like cheese looks totally different so let's move the burger patty above to have some space for our water simulation now let's add a plane and scale it to a considerable amount then in edit mode subdivide it 50 times and add a collision modifier to the patty and then use the cloth modifier to lay it on top of it and then use the solidify modifier to add some thickness and then add a subsurf modifier then with the cheese selected go to object quick effects and select quick liquid now scale the box domain down to only the cheese and patty and then in solid view mode with the cube selected go to object properties and under viewport display change it from solid to bounds now we can see the water simulation clearly also check this mesh option so that our water will be a mesh object now add a fluid physics to the burn as well and set the type to effector and effector type to collision normally water is represented with the blue color mesh but right now you can see it isn't there this is because the resolution is too low so in my experiment a resolution of 128 works fine but the higher the resolution the more time it will take to simulate and also make sure that you are on frame 1 then in the cache settings set your end frame and change the type from replay to all now let's hit bake and wait for a couple of minutes until it simulates Okay so now the simulation is done and you can see the water is blue and we want to see the mesh so again go to object properties and change the viewport display to solid now in rendered view let's also remove this water material from the cheese and let's apply the fluid and the liquid modifier on your preferred frame now let's hide this plane and remove it from the rendered view as well and let's move it to a new collection called cheese now let's go to shading tab and let's create a new material for it and let's give it a yellowish orange color and let's decrease the roughness and the surface of the cheese looks very similar to plastic so i think 0.3 or 0.4 will be great also let's add some subsurface scattering so for me a value of 0.1 is great and i set the subsurface radius to 1 0.2 and 0.1 and this represent the rgb values now let's add a bump node and a vorona texture and plug the distance into the height and then add a color ramp in between and tweak it a little and decrease the strength and if the texture looks stretched add a texture coordinate node and there you go your cheese is done Now in the same way as you did with the tomatoes you can make this onion rings as well and i found this texture on pinterest now add in our top bun to close the whole burger and let's go to shading tab uh by the way we will create the csm seeds later so don't focus on that for now so let's just duplicate the principal bsdf and mix them using control shift and right mouse drag and for the factor let's add in a noise texture and let's also change the principal bsdf colors to dark orange and a bit of brown orange and we can change them anytime and now add in a texture coordinate node to the noise texture and set that to object and add a color ramp to make the transition harder and you can play with the detail and roughness value as well 
and also try playing with the colors. Now let's duplicate the principal BSDF again and set it to a color similar to braids cutting portion. And now mix the third principal BSDF and mix shader. And add a gradient texture and plug the color into the factor. And also add a color ramp node to make it harder. And try playing with the texture coordinates. And these are my texture coordinates for the top one. Now as we did with the patty, let's copy the noise texture and plug it into the bump node and connect it into the normal. And try playing with the noise texture values to get better results. Uh, for the first noise texture, I set the scale to 10 with a very low strength. Now apply the same material to the bottom one as well and make it a single user copy. Now let's add in a braid texture into the braid color we just made. So select the principal BSDF and press Ctrl T and I will open it up. By the way, I also found this texture on Pinterest and then you can try playing with the scale. Now let's scatter some sesame seeds. So first let's select the top bun and go to edit mode. And let's select the face loop by holding down alt and left click. Now hold down the control button and press the numpad plus button to increase the selection. Then go to vertex group and add in a vertex group and hit assign. Now let's add a particle system to the bun and now let's create some sesame seeds. So let's add in a plane and add some edge loops to it to give it a general shape of a sesame seed and let's add in a solidify modifier and a subsurf modifier and shade it smooth. Now let's move it to a new collection and let's create three variations of it. Also the origin point is at the top of seeds. This means that the seeds will be under the bread. So to fix that, let's select all three and go to edit mode and press 1 for front view and then press A to select all and then press G and Z to move them upwards. Okay, now it's good. Now add just a simple material to the sesame seeds like a pale yellowish orange and then apply the modifiers. Now set the particle system to hairs and go to render. Uh, set that to collection and set the instance collection to sesame. Now check rotation and set that to normal tangent. Now if you rotate them and press Ctrl A to apply the rotation, you can see that these particles are rotated as well. So rotate them in such a way that the seeds should lay on top of the bun. And then in rotation, increase the randomized face to all the way up. Then uh, go to vertex group and set the density to vertex group that we just made. And if they are too much, you can decrease the numbers from here. And I think we are pretty much done with the burger. Now to render it, I added a cube with an array modifier. And I added a wooden plank texture to it. And then I applied the array modifier and I distorted the table a little bit. And then I added a huge plane that acts as a wall. And for the lighting, I added an area light and placed it on the right side and increased the size and intensity, which will give it a soft lighting effect. And then there is a light that will illuminate the wall. And there's one more on the left side with very low intensity to just avoid the blackout. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, consider subscribing to this channel and I will see you next time. Bye bye.